Hello, darling. Learning how to put a fire out? <laughs> you know a job with mine. All right, all right. Keep your hair on. He's only having a bit of a giggle. Don't know what's the matter with you all this morning. It's all the same. It's fun to have a bit of fun, of course. One of man's most comforting friends. But give friend fire just one inch and he'll take a mile. Hotels are our business. And it would be correct to say that in many ways, hotels are very special places. Hotels are varied. Some of them are big, some small. Some of them are new, and others not so new. But they all have a number of things in common. One is that guests are nearly always unfamiliar with the layout of the hotel. They spend much of their time there sleeping. And among their numbers, there are usually children, the elderly, and those who are perhaps deaf or disabled. Another is that the amount of fire, heat, and electrical power needed to service several hundreds of guests under one roof, plus the unknown and sometimes not very careful smoking habits of some of those guests, makes every hotel a serious fire risk. We, management and staff, have a duty in law to prevent fire and to take correct action in the event of fire. To put it plainly, we have to keep before us the prospect of a rather nasty death. The possibility of fire, like many other unpleasant things, is all too often swept under the carpet. For us, in the hotel's business with thousands of lives entrusted to our care, to be slack where fire prevention is concerned would indeed be serious. It is legally required for all hotel staff to be trained in what to do in case of fire. Few people have been involved in a real fire. It is not generally known, for example, that more fire victims die from suffocation and carbon monoxide poisoning than from actual contact with flame. This indicates the need for protected escape routes. It is not generally known that fire will spread at a speed that is quite staggering, particularly where a free flow of air can fan the flames. This makes it necessary to divide large buildings into fire-resisting compartments and to provide suitable fire-fighting equipment. Finally, it is not understood that when suddenly faced by fire, even the coolest person may not be able to think clearly and constructively. This points to instinctive response, and that is acquired by training. Uncontrolled fire is terrifying. It is a self-energizing furnace in which a small fire to begin with creates a convection current. The oxygen drawn into the flames increases combustion and the fire grows progressively bigger and hotter. At the same time, acrid smoke and hot poisonous gases spread out, seeking a vertical shaft in which to rise they continue to spread and rise, spread and rise. 
and people unfortunate enough to get caught up in them are quickly overcome. Furthermore, the gases are hot enough to cause new fires some distance from the original outbreak. It is possible then for a fire starting on the ground floor of a hotel to spread to the staircases and feed smoke and more fire to every other floor. This is the killer, fire. In a recent year, there were 649 fires in hotels throughout the United Kingdom. That is getting on for two somewhere for every day of the week. Of all fires in hotels, 10% are caused by electrical circuitry, 10% by electrical appliances, 11% by space heating, 17% by cooking appliances, 25% by smoking materials, and 27% have miscellaneous or unknown origins. Of all night fires, two-thirds are caused by smoking materials. To deal with fire, we have to train in three basic things, prevention, control, and escape. Prevention is every thought and action aimed at avoiding the outbreak of a fire. It is the ability to spot possible danger. For the manager, this means seeing that all fire prevention principles are carried out and making sure that staff are trained regularly in these matters. When contractors are in the building, Managers should be particularly cautious, as most building and decorating materials burn easily. Know where they are and shut the door on them. For patrolmen who are on duty during the small hours, there should be two separate inspections of all lounges, bars and function rooms. Look closely for any signs of smoking waste. A cigarette end that sneaks into the upholstery during the evening can cause a smouldering that will burst into flames hours later. For convenience, public rooms are often placed near stairways, which may also be escape rooms. This calls for additional care and always a thorough inspection. In lounges and service areas, look out for electrical appliances. If not in use for any particular reason, disconnect them by withdrawing the plug. For housemaids, there is the responsibility for seeing that any portable room heaters are safely positioned. When clearing rooms, all smoking waste must be collected separately and never mixed with tissues or other waste paper. And where chutes are provided, bundles of waste must be kept small to prevent them getting stuck. Where rubbish goes down, fire can come up. I say, don't do that. Never put a lighted cigarette end down a rubbish chute. Go to where you are permitted to smoke and dispose of your cigarette end safely. Service rooms have a variety of fire risks according to the type of hotel. In some, there are electric rings for tea making. In others, bed linen, towels and other combustibles are stored. And in the less modern hotel with no rubbish chute, room waste is often held there before disposal. Think about these things and use your common sense. Do not, for example, dry tea towels over heating appliances. By the end of the day, of course, we're all ready to fall down like a damp cloth and perhaps relax in the privacy of a staff room. But don't let switch off the prevention. All these appliances are overloading the circuit, causing the wiring in the walls and under the floors to get hot. Be safe and connect only one approved appliance to a socket at a time. Cleaners must understand that working materials like polishes and dusters are inflammable and that for safety, 
they should be kept in covered metal bins. It is most important that mops, dusters, and indeed all combustibles are kept well away from tubular or storage heaters, where any sort of covering causes a build-up of heat. You don't need a flame to start a fire. For housekeepers, the supervision of all these matters is vitally important, bearing in mind that general maintenance, orderliness, and a disciplined way of going about the job greatly reduces the risk of fire. For kitchen staff who use heat and flame in the course of their duties, there is the danger of becoming familiar and careless. Be orderly, careful, and think ahead. See that ventilation filters and hoods like these are cleaned regularly. If they are overlooked, grease and dirt collect inside the trunking, and it only takes the carelessness of an overheated fryer to start the fireworks. It is because people make mistakes that prevention doesn't always succeed. In the event of fire, therefore, we have to take steps to control it. In modern hotels, control is built into the structure by means of compartmentation. This is the division of the building into units, perhaps taking in more than one floor and a number of rooms. Each unit is bounded by fire-resisting walls and floors. Access from one compartment to another is made through self-closing doors known as fire doors or smoke-stop doors. The purpose of compartmentation is to stop fire and smoke from spreading, to restrict the flow of oxygen to the flames, and to allow unhindered escape from the building. For fire doors to be effective, they must be in the closed position. Some of the modern ones are linked to a fire alarm system and are held open by electromagnets. When the alarm is raised, the doors close automatically. The usual type of fire door, however, is retained in the closed position by means of spring hinges. This can be a bit of a nuisance sometimes, but it is vitally important for the safety of the hotel. Even with a trolley, it is quite simple to pass through without having to wedge them open. Keep fire doors closed. Another structural control is the sprinkler alarm system, which is often used in stores and exhibition areas. This system works when there is a sudden rise in temperature. The alarm is triggered and the whole of the affected area is sprayed with water. In places like corridors and bars, automatic alarm systems based on smoke detection alone are frequently fitted. Structural control, human control. And that's a different story. Unlike a piece of equipment, people are not switched on automatically. Well, not in the way we mean. And when they do get switched on, it may well be to panic stations and not to control. When suddenly faced by fire, we must do the right things and in the right order. Reaction must be instinctive and quick. We must first raise the alarm and then, if possible, attack the fire. Raising the alarm means making it known immediately that you have discovered a fire. In a hotel, this is done by breaking the glass of one of these alarm points, or by telephoning the switchboard using the emergency number. Either of these alerts the switchboard where the operators have special instructions about calling the fire brigade and the hotel fire party. Fire reported on the fourth floor. Would you count the station road entrance, please? Thank you. If possible, attack the fire. This means that having raised the alarm, and if there is no great personal risk, the fire should be attacked with one of the firefighting appliances nearby. These are hose reels which extend freely and give a continuous water supply. Water extinguishers which give a jet of carbonated water rather like a soda water siphon. Because water conducts electricity, this type of extinguisher must never be used on electrical fires. Carbon dioxide extinguishers. 
These flood the area with a heavy inert gas, so starving the flames of oxygen. These are used on cooking oil fires and on all electrical fires. Foam extinguishers. These are for tackling oil and petrol fires which might occur, for instance, in a hotel garage. The foam floats to the surface and smothers the flame. Dry powder. These are general purpose extinguishers which can also be used on electrical fires. And asbestos blankets. These are found mainly in kitchens and can be used for wrapping around someone whose clothes have caught fire or for quickly smothering a small, fat fire. Now let us take one or two examples that might involve you. What do you do? Shut the door quickly and raise the alarm. In this case, you think the fire is small enough for you to have a go. Re-enter the room cautiously, and if safe to do so, try to control the blaze until the fire party arrives. This time, you see smoke seeping round the bedroom door. Do not, repeat, do not open the door to find out what is causing it. Just raise the alarm and wait for the fire party to arrive. Hello, switchboard. There's smoke coming from 307 store. Yeah. Could you get the fire brigade? Because of the unknown risks on the other side of this door, it is unsafe for you to enter. Simply raise the alarm and stand by. Straight away, it looks pretty serious. Thank you. You may work in the kitchen. Raise the alarm. Great Mike, fire! Smash the alarm! A fat fire. Can you control it? Yes. Get the nearest carbon dioxide extinguisher and direct the gas towards the bottom of the flame, making sure that somebody turns off the heat. When the flames have been put out, cover the fryer with an asbestos blanket to prevent reignition and stand by. Investigation for any signs of fire in the ventilation trunking will then be carried out by the fire party or the fire brigade. Get to know the various types of fire extinguisher in your hotel. Their choice and sighting have been carefully planned to meet the fire risks in those areas. Make sure you can use them if suddenly called upon to do so. Raise the alarm and attack the fire. Never reverse that order, because even when attacked, small fires can very quickly become big fires, and lost minutes in raising the alarm could end in tragedy for many, and also for you. Because of the overwhelming nature of fire, it is vital to provide means of escape. In modern hotels, fire-protected escape routes are built within the structure and allow easy access to the street. In older buildings, the escape routes may be the ordinary staircases which have been protected in some way, or they may be external. Whatever the escape route, it should be clearly marked, be well lit and kept free from obstruction. Everyone must see that escape landings are not used for the storage of occasional items, no matter how temporary and electricians must check daily that all lights are working, especially if the escape route is separate and seldom used. In the event of a serious hotel fire, it is essential that all the occupants can reach safety quickly and without panic. If all or part of the hotel is to be evacuated, you may be needed to alert guests and to direct them to the nearest escape route. Remember that there will be children, the elderly, and perhaps the disabled to cope with. Some guests may be deaf or heavy sleepers, and most will be quite unfamiliar with all the corridors and staircases and will have no sense of direction. 
that calm handling of a situation like this requires training and practice. It is the duty of management to hold fire drills at intervals of not more than six months. Now, if we can look next at fire prevention, I have five points listed on the board here, which is important for you to remember. The training that is needed in all these things is not difficult to arrange. As careful as you can be. This means that when you're entering... The common sense approach wanted for prevention can be included in the general training for the job. With the support of good supervision, staff will soon learn to keep an eye open for possible danger. Training in control means a clear understanding by all staff of what has to be done on discovering fire. Instructions should be kept simple and displayed prominently. Training in control means showing staff how to raise the alarm and how to use the firefighting equipment. And it means getting everybody to understand that closed fire doors keep fire and smoke from spreading, thereby aiding escape. Training in escape is the most important of all three, as immediate survival depends upon it. Staff must be trained to use their own initiative in keeping escape routes clear. And finally, fire drills must be held at regular intervals to do away with confusion and to reach a satisfactory speed in getting everybody out. Prevention, control, escape. Instinctive response. Safety against the uninvited guest. All right, all right, keep your hair on. He's only having a bit of a giggle. Don't want to nobody all this morning. <laughs> Please. There's been smoke reported coming from a third floor window. Thank you. 